Today, we're going to take a look at the Dolphin Nautilus CC Pro Robotic Pool Cleaner from Matronics. So stick around. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do a complete review of the Dolphin Nautilus CC Pro from Matronics. So the time has come. I needed to replace my uh, pool uh, robot. And so this is the one that I elected to. Uh, I had the Dolphin Premier um, before that, but uh, this is going to take its place. And so today we're going to take a look at a whole bevy of things. And uh, I don't even know exactly what all we're going to cover at this point. I'll probably put a, uh, a menu or something down below um, that uh, gives you chapter markers and everything for all that we're going to cover. Um, but I know I need to get this thing in my cool and get it clean. So uh, we're going to go over some of the, a lot of the features and performance, et cetera, et cetera. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right. First things first, what are we going to find in the box? Well, pretty simple. We've got this, uh, they've gone to this, you know, Apple S. You open the box, there's a nice little plastic uh, tray for this to fit into. So you have this little uh, packet here with their exceptional experience. It kind of goes over uh, what you can expect. They remind you uh, to register and even invite you to take a picture with your new robot and post it on social media. You're going to have uh, this quick start guide in many languages. You've got uh, how to connect to the My Dolphin Plus application. This is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. We'll go over that a little later. We've got our safety instructions in here. Got some frequently asked questions. You've got your 20-month limited warranty. So that is your little information packet that you're going to find. Moving right along, we have our power supply much smaller than the uh, one that was on the Premier. Very simple. You got a power button here. You get a Wi-Fi uh, or Bluetooth icon. And there's this little card here that kind of covers what all of those colors mean. You've got your cable. This one does have the uh, integrated swivel, which uh, allows these two parts to rotate. Uh, or Actually, it's internal, but to rotate independently so that your cable doesn't get tangled. And then we'll take a look at the robot next. Here is a look at the robot itself. So very simple. One thing that you will notice if you have any familiarity with some of their other units, this one does have uh, actual tracks on the outside as opposed to just the uh, brushes um, on the other version. So that is quite a difference on this unit here. It Everything happens from the top on this unit. So you can see... As I open up the lid here, which has just got the, a little catch, you've got a basket to catch all your debris. We'll take a closer look at that here in a moment. You've got your cord up here on the top. You've got some vents, two vents, one on either side. You've got one on uh, the top here uh, as well as in the back. Let's take a look at the bottom of the unit. Another change from my other robot is on this unit, you have one intake port here on the bottom. It's uh, fairly large, so that's going to be great for sucking up debris. You've got some uh, rubber little flaps here that, again, that's also going to increase uh, the suction amount here. And once things get in this area, it's going to stay. And then you have two different size brushes. So you've kind of got some fine fins on the top up here, and then you have some larger fins on the bottom one here. And then again, you can see the tracks and you've got some uh, intake ports or probably not intake, but you've got some uh, water drainage ports here on the uh, on the either side of the suction port. And finally, taking a look at the back uh, here, you have the impeller uh, output. And then on the sides, again, this is where it's going to suck water in and then push it out the back here for that uh, downward pressure. So that you climb the walls. And then finally, you have the large brush back here in the rear. Now let's take a closer look at this uh, basket. So again, when you open the lid, the basket handle is going to pop right up, and we're able to take out the debris basket, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. And then uh, on the inside here, 
if we tilt this and I'm going to turn it just a little bit so we can catch the light you can see here we have the port where we're going to be sucking water into the filter basket and then over here um, is where the the water can drain from the unit let's take a closer look at our filter basket again it is spring loaded here it comes with some fine filters you are able to get some super fine filters as well these are removable and uh, you can just change those out if you need to they are specifically numbered you can see here one two three and then four so they need to go in the proper uh, orientation here on the front you have this clasp that allows you to open the bottom and dump out any debris that you have and then you can just simply hose it off now one thing i want to point out i think this is genius um the other robot that i had <clears throat> had a different um, method. It was just basically a spring-loaded plastic flap. And if anything got caught in that flap, um, it was open. And so everything that had sucked in would fall out when you uh, pulled the unit out of the water. This is kind of a mesh bag here or a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mesh, but it's got these heavy rods inside. And so you can see when you have suction, it's going to open up and let debris uh, come into the filter box, but once that suction stops, these rods flip over and it closes this off so you're not going to have any of that uh, debris draining back out of the box. So very simple and easy. This is one of the main reasons that I chose uh, this unit is because of the simplicity of which uh, everything happens as far as removing the filters. At the end of the video, I will cover some of the differences between this unit and the Premier, the Premier is still offered. It's much more expensive than this, than this unit. Um, so I will give some, uh, I don't know, pros and cons or some, uh, or some comparison between these two units. One thing I did want to point out is just kind of how neat they thought about all of this. So over here on the lid, you actually have this little ramp. So if you, as you close this, it actually pushes uh, the handle down for you. So again, since it's spring loaded, you don't have to do like a two handed motion to make that happen. It will just automatically uh, lower that for you. Okay, so here we are. We're outside. We're going to get this thing all hooked up and uh, ready for its maiden voyage. As you can see, it's equipped there with the GoPro. So we're going to get some underwater, underwater footage uh, as well. But the first thing we need to do is get this in the water so that we can uh, connect. Um, the uh, app and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that. So let's get her wet. All right, the next item we're going to do is set up the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, etc. So I am going to download uh, the app onto my phone. And we have that here. So it looks like I need to start an account. So we'll get that taken care of. Now we'll go ahead and uh, continue the setup. We've got my account created. So... Here I have my app uh, set up, uh, or not set up, but I've got it installed. So the next step is to press the power button. This will actually start the robot running. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then we'll hit this let's get started. So select the power source of your robot, power supply, plug it in, should be plugged in. It is plugged in, put it in the water. The robot is in the water, continue, allow, Location accessed, so we're going to say OK, and I'm saying when using the app, allow nearby devices, allow, and it is looking for my robot, and hopefully it will find that soon. Hooray, tap on your robot image to connect, so we've got that. It is. All right, now we've got this connected. It looks like I was just having some issues with my uh, the cameras connected to a gimbal, which is on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so we'll hit OK Next. 
we'll name this thing. I'm not very creative, so it's a dolphin, so I'm going to name it Flipper. Probably forget that. Nice to meet you. Use Wi-Fi to get Flipper online for the full experience. Find my Wi-Fi network. So, we are, it looks like we are searching for Wi-Fi networks. And I will choose my network and move this out of the way while I put in my password. Done and connect. Now you can see setup is complete. Um, our little icon here has uh, shows that it is now Wi-Fi connected. So now we've got, I could hit let's clean my pool. Um, select get updates there. It'll send me updates. And it's been running for a while. You can see it's cleaning. So it shows me 37% completed. Tells me when it's going to fit finish. Um, and then I have a number of options here as well. I've got a store so I can go and visit the store and get filters, etc. I can schedule when I want uh, my robot to run. I can put it in manual drive. Um, I have a visual effect blinking. You, if, uh, you'll see the light um, from the underwater video, but it looks like I can put it on disco for multicolor if I want that. Support, history, and then settings. So that is basically some information here from the application. All right, folks, here we are again. Um, this is actually day two. So last night we ran a complete cycle with the uh, Nautilus here, or Flipper, as you may know it now that I named it Flipper. But anyway, ran last night, let that job finish, and then this morning I started a second cycle. So what we're going to do now is take it out, um, see how it is as it comes up out of the water. And I ran two cycles because it's been about a week since um, the pool was cleaned, and so... It uh, definitely needed a little extra love, but we're going to take it out. We're going to um, pull out the filters and see how it performed. So uh, according to the manual, you can, or you, I mean, this is really the only way to get it out. You can pull it from the cord um, to get it to the, you know, to the location. They just tell you not to pull the, the uh, unit out of the water using the cord. So once you get it up here, you've got the handle and then you can pull it out of the water. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, one of the, the first things is you notice here, we're not losing any debris because of that improved, uh, method of, of, uh, capturing or it doesn't have the flap. And again, I'll show you how that one is on the other, on uh, the other unit while we do the comparison. So really not that bad. Once the water runs out of it, it's not terribly heavy. So let's take it over and give it a cleaning. Okay, now we have the unit uh, sitting here, and again, all we need to do is just lift up on that handle. The, for this little catch, handle automatically pops up, and then we lift our basket straight up. And so it's as easy as that. I'm gonna move that out of the way and to give you a view here of what we have. So 
you look at the inside of the basket, you can see I have a lot of very fine uh, debris in there. And to clean it out, all I need to do is flip this little latch right here, and that will allow everything uh, there to fall out. So I'm just going to... Oh, looks like we here. Popped out one of our panels. Those come out nice and easy. So that'll make it easier, actually, uh, to clean. Well, let me come back here where you can see what's happening. These just pop in here. See, oh, there's that. Yeah. Oops. Now, you don't have to take these panels out. I could have just completely uh, sprayed this out. But uh, this is the first time I'm doing it, so a little bit of learning here. But then we are just going to grab our garden hose here. And give Venus a quick spray down. Lots of... Lots of bugs and silt and all sorts of stuff that then there. We've had a lot of storms lately, so I've got a lot of sand that's been blowing. So easy as that there's the four panels and then the basket itself with you have piss twist the spray down now speaking of filters as i mentioned earlier in the uh, video um it ships with the fine filters but you can get the ultra fine filters and these have kind of uh it's a corrugated um material that's much finer so it's going to trap a lot finer particles in there it's great if your pool is cloudy um it's just an additional level of filtration so these i ordered off amazon it's not the official uh, you know dolphin brand uh, but i figured i'd give them a try i'll put a link in the description for you and so these are going to pop in just the same way there's little tabs here along the bottom and they are numbered so it's going to correspond for example this is number three so if i just slide this in, line up those tabs there at the bottom, and then push this in. It'll snap into place. I think it's easiest if you do the sides first. Uh, like so we'll do three and then four. Those shouldn't make any difference. And then we'll, we'll do number two here. So kind of a reverse order. You could do four, three, two, one. Uh, the manual does show that uh, you should take them out in the one, two, three, four order. Again, don't know if it makes any difference. Although putting it in, I think it is much trickier. Uh, I think the the front and rear, so one and two, kind of overlap three and four. So if you put one and two in first, you are not going to be able to get three and four in. So uh, just words of warning there. Get this, my oven. Light, make sure. There we go. So that's all. Now that we have the new filters in, it's just a matter of putting that down, clicking that back in place, and the unit is ready for the next clean. So we're going to pop it back in the pool and uh, we can fire it up again using the app. Now I know it's pretty bright out here so it might be a little difficult to uh, see my screen here but uh, when I open it up I've got this big power button. I just hit that. It says make sure there's no swimmers in the water. I hit let's go and it says cleaning now 0% completed and again it gives me the time uh, that the robot is going to finish and if I pull my phone out of the way, you can see now that the robot or flipper is running again. So it's been a couple days since we put in the uh, 
ultra fine or whatever you want to classify those filters. So we're going to go ahead and pull the unit out. We're going to give those a quick wash down so you can see the difference between um, the uh, capture capability between these two filters. Now, just for example, um, or as a reference, the last couple days have been fairly windy and I've got palm trees that uh, surround my pool and they're going through whatever their seeding season. And so I've got all these little tiny seeds that are coming from the palm tree. This was just cleaned. I think I, it, today is Monday. I sprayed this thing out Saturday morning. Um, so within two days, this is what uh, the top, you know, what's floating, but the skimmer caught. Um, so we're going to have, you know, obviously most of those don't, don't fall to the bottom, but, uh, really what I want to show you primarily is the discoloration, um, and the ultra fine particles that we're catching in here. So you can see the color difference here on the side. And when I spray this out, you'll probably see a lot of that if we look at the uh the bag here the little flap you can see a lot of the fine particles these would have passed through the other filter so having these uh finer filters are definitely going to aid in keeping your water clean so let's spray those off again just to give you an idea here of, of what we're catching with these fine filters helps if i get it in the rain all of that fine sediment that is coming off here. Now here, if I move the robot, you can see all of that that these filters have had. All right, here's something I wanted to point out really quick. I think originally or earlier on in this video, before I had looked uh, too much at this unit, I had said that the uh, these sides here were uh, intake ports, and that is not correct. So something that I just noticed is it actually uses um, some, you'd say, thrust vectoring here. So the impeller is right here where I'm sticking my finger. Now, normally when this lid is closed, there's a port right here, and the impeller is going to force water uh, through this position here into this port. Let me turn the, turn the unit around so you can see what I'm talking about. So right here, uh, there we go. Now you can see that on the camera, maybe. So it pushes water in this port, and then that is going to come out back here. And that's going to provide the downward force that keeps the unit on the bottom or allows it to climb walls. One of the things I noticed when it was cleaning uh, the other day was when it comes up to the, uh, to the side and is, is cleaning the water line, I saw water coming out of these side ports. So I was like, oh, that's not an intake. It's actually uh, has the ability to shoot water out of there. So when we look at this uh, little thrust vectoring uh, part here, let me just make sure that I'm still in focus right there. There we go. Um, this actually pivots. So it can, instead of forcing water out of the back port it can go either side and so that is how the unit turns you if you uh and i'm going to show the operation of the remote here in a second but you'll see that it it kind of it'll it'll back up and then go forward and it it sort of turns in one direction when it's making its turns and it's doing that by doing this thrust vectoring out of these ports on the side so pretty ingenious. I guess that uh, allows them instead of, you know, originally I was kind of curious as to why uh, they don't use, um, since it's got these tank-like treads, why don't they just, you know, why does this thing not run like a tank and have the ability to spin uh, on a dime? But that's going to take two motors. You'd have to have a motor for each side, and then you'd, the brush would actually have to be disconnected in the middle. I think um, I can't remember which, which model it is, but the most expensive one in this uh, Nautilus line, the brush is split. I don't know if it operates that way or not, um, but I know the Dolphin Premier only had one motor for the impeller, and it had one motor that drove both tracks, and it used it actually would float up uh, those floats, as I think I mentioned before. It would actually float, if this motor wasn't running, 
it caused it to float like this and then only one track would be in contact and that would allow it uh, to turn. And so depending, it really only turned in the, in well, no, I guess it could turn in two directions, but anyway, so just a little bit about that. But let's take a look at the remote function and put this back in the pool and show you how you can manually control it. All right, so we'll do a really quick side-by-side -side comparison because I wanted to show you a few of the differences between these two units. So before I get into the uh, filter, um, just a little note on the front. So you can see the brushes are a little bit different. I think they, they call this a combo brush. It's got some large fins and some side fins here. And then this has these little, um, they're almost like those magic erasers. Um, originally, I thought maybe they were for cleaning, but they're actually for grip when, it, when it's climbing the wall. And you can see, I replaced these about a year ago. Um, and so I'm missing one here. I think I'm missing one in the back. Yeah, so I've already gone through a set of those. So this doesn't have them. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, if it doesn't need them um, or what. I will say that I've never seen this unit climb the walls sideways. Um, it always seemed to go straight up and then come back down. Um, this one was just going along the side. So you'll also notice that this one had the flotation um, devices on top. And that's, that was required because that's how this thing turned. You had to have one side up. And what it would do to turn is it would actually turn off the impeller and that would cause it to uh, tilt like this. And then this would drive and it would kind of turn in, uh, you know, in a circle. So that's the only way that this thing uh, was able to turn. Um, obviously, this one doesn't have it. It has a different method of turning. Talking about the cords really quick. If you look at the difference in cords, uh, you'll notice that the Premier has a much thicker cord. Again, I don't know if that's because it's, you know, more expensive and it was made to last longer uh, or if it, you know, has more power requirement and they needed a thicker cord. Um, but uh, that's that. Okay. And let's take a look at the uh, bottom of these two units. So, yeah, for meter up. Yeah. Flip up the uh, CC or the Nautilus CC Pro here. And I'm just going to make sure everything's still in focus. So, again, as I mentioned before, on the Nautilus uh, Pro, you've got the one intake here with this new method. You've got these little fins here on the bottom. Um, you don't have that over here on the Dolphin Premier. You just have these two intake ports here with these flaps. And we'll uh, take a look more at that. You had your drive tracks along the bottom here and then your two brushes which were identical on the nautilus you've got a much larger brush in the back and a smaller brush in the front now if you saw the underwater video one thing that did impress me about this unit was that this brush spins much faster than this brush so it is not responsible for driving the unit so much um i mean obviously they both have the tracks to do that but since this is spinning at a higher rate of speed it's actually i think it's probably going to it has the potential to do more planing. All right, now, the filters themselves. We've already seen this one. We've seen how easy it is to take out uh, the filters. You pop out, you pop these out, pop them back in, um, and you're good to go. So that's how that one is. Now, the Premier, you've got these tabs on the bottom. This whole piece comes out, and then... Here you have your filters. So you've got these four filters. Again, in this one, I was running the ultra fine filters. And these unclip, and then you can wash them out, and then you clip them back in. So not necessarily more difficult, um, but you do have to make sure that they're um, lined up. Really no different than the other one. Uh, but as you can see, you do have to, you do have to uh, flip the machine over. You've got to take this whole thing out. And now, again, I had this machine for, I got it in 2013, so 11 years. Um, it is it is seeing better days. You can see this is, this is broken a number of times. I've epoxied it several times just because I didn't want to spend the money to buy a new one. I'm sure I could, could do that, but it's probably not necessarily cheap to buy this whole uh, plastic piece. Now, if I take these off, this is a point I've made a couple times in this video. So you can see this is the spring-loaded flap, but if anything gets 
hot in here, then this flap stays open. Um, so it's not uncommon to have a, like a larger leaf or a branch or a twig or something like that. Or, you know, and so this will be kind of open. And then when you pull this out, your debris, all that water that's rushing out is coming out through this, this spot. Um, and so you'll have debris that goes back into the pool, which is never a, a fun thing. So that was probably the reason that they went to this method here where this actually flops over and closes uh, once there's no more suction so that you don't run into that problem. So I am happy to see that they changed uh, that design up. So that's just a little uh, bit of the differences uh, between the Nautilus CC Pro and the Dolphin Premier. I'll put up a uh, graphic with some stats on there, but uh, this machine is about $1,700, whereas this one is uh, $1,100 ish. You know, it kind of depends on when you get it or if there's sales or anything like that. I could have my numbers wrong, but uh, roughly this machine is going to cost you six or $700 more. Um, there is a difference three year warranty, two year warranty, um, but obviously much newer. Uh, I would say a lot more features. So small comparison there. One question that may come up um, if you're like myself and you are replacing an older unit, um, does the Nautilus Pro fit on the old Caddy? So the answer is yes and no. The robot itself does fit. Um, these four raised areas uh, fit nicely, so it's not going to impact the, anything down here and compress uh, any of your fins or anything. So that's going to fit nicely. You can still maneuver it around. Uh, what does not fit is the power supply. So if I spin this unit around, <clears throat> this is the old power supply for the Dolphin Premier. And what you can see is they had made this to fit in this spot specifically. So you'd had some mounting uh, mounting bullets back here and it just slid in and locked in there. Um, so that does not fit. I am going to probably make a bracket, a 3D printed bracket that's going to fit on these posts that will um, fit these mounting holes here just so I can also have uh, this on the back because right now it's sitting where you would normally coil the cord when you have it out of the water. So there's the answer to the caddy. It's kind of a, it'll work. Um, I'm not going to, I don't actually use the caddy all that much. So most of the time the uh, robot is in the pool. So I'm, I did not feel the need to spend more money on a caddy. Okay. So now we have put the uh, unit. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see my phone here. It might be too close to focus, but anyway, we put it in manual mode. And so now, uh, I can, if I tell it to go backward, uh, that is backward. I can tell it to go forward and it moves forward and then we'll do a this would be a right hand turn which will probably look backward because of the way that the unit is facing but you can see it it does turn it kind of does this like a, a wheelie um, so if I let the water clear I'll do another right hand turn it backs up then it goes forward and it turns to the right so we'll come backward again and and now we'll do a left-hand turn. And you can see it is, if I continue to hold this, it'll do another turn. And now I will go forward. So honestly, it's easier to drive um, than the Dolphin. The Dolphin was, uh, or the Dolphin Premier did not, it, with, even with that remote, which I had to pay extra for, um, it was a little harder to control. So in my original view that I did many, many years ago, I pretty much said, you know, you might as well pass on the remote because it's more frustrating uh, to use than it's actually uh, useful. So, all right, folks, let's wrap this thing up. Um, first of all, thanks for sticking with me. Um, before, you know, I usually do this at the end of the videos, but before I get into the uh, final thoughts on the Matronics, Dolphin Nautilus CC Pro Robotic Pool Cleaner. Um, if you like what I'm doing on the channel, again, please hit the little like, hit the subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified when I drop new content. I really would appreciate that. 
Um, second thing, uh, please don't uh, flame me too much for the poor audio on this one. I apologize. You know, most of my videos, the audio is great. But uh, I just realized, and I've been filming this for about a week now, and I was just going over some of the footage, and I realized that uh, my microphone cable that connects this wireless microphone to my camera was actually plugged into the headphone jack. So it had been using the onboard microphones on the camera, which are obviously not near as good. So I apologize for that, um, all the poor audio. Um, there was a point where I actually thought I... Or I hadn't turned on my microphone. I thought there was no audio, but we did get that. So anyway, let's wrap this up. So my final thoughts on this. Um, like I said, I've had the unit uh, only about a week. I think when I did the uh, review on the Dolphin Premier, I'd had it for about a month. But um, I can already tell you that uh, it is performing outstanding. Uh, it's actually, I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. Um, I think it's doing a much better job. Um, and... We'll, we'll get into the, the pros and cons on that uh, here in a second. So let me go over the pros. So starting with that, uh, it's less expensive. So I paid $1,020.18 shipped. So again, I got this uh, on Amazon. I paid about $1,300, I believe, back in 2013 when I bought the uh, Premier. Um, so it's a little cheaper. Uh, it like I said, I think it's working better. I think it scrubs a little uh, better. So when my pool was coming out of uh, the winter months and the temperature was starting to rise, um, I was not able to to uh, get ahead of the algae. Normally, I very have very little algae, um, but I did have a little bit of an algae bloom. And so I was able to treat that, but there were still you know, some spots where I had dead algae. And if you've had a pool, you know that that can be very difficult to scrub. Well, after having this for a week, a lot of that algae um, is gone. And I attribute that for to that um, the front brush that I mentioned. So it actually rotates at a much higher speed than anything that's driving it. So I think just that, that small change there um, is really making this unit work uh, quite a bit better. You've heard me again and again talk about the easy access to the to the filters. Just popping that clasp, clasp on the top, pulling out that basket, and uh, being able to uh, spray that off. Um, it's it's pretty makes things pretty simple. And then the app control. So the app, um, like that, wasn't a huge you know reason that I chose this. Most of the Dolphin models um, have you know some kind of app control, and some have more features than others. Uh, but it gives me, you know, those options um, for the like weekly control. I can turn it on like I could turn it on right now if I wanted to. Uh, just sitting here, you've got the ability to manually uh, drive the robot. So if it misses a spot, um, it, you know, you can just fire up the app and, and uh, drive it around and, and you know, clean up anything that you want. So the app does give you some more options. Um, so let's, uh, now that we've talked about that, let's go into the cons. So one, let's start with the app. Um, not that there's anything bad about the app, but I do worry just because I'm of the generation and many of you are too, uh, if you own a house and you have a pool, that um, you've seen things come and go. I recently replaced a lot of my car stereo equipment. And one of the reasons that I did that is because I had some, um, I had a unit in my car stereo that was originally, it had a Bluetooth app, but this was designed, you know, back with like Palm Pilots and things like that back in the uh, early 2000s and you, like Windows 95, stuff like that. The apps or, you know, the operating systems change and it gets to the point where you know, either the hardware isn't supported anymore or the operating system or the software, you know, so I'm just a little bit curious three years down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, um, like my Dolphin Premier lasted 11 years. Um, am I still going to be able to use an app or will that get phased out and then I lose those features? So it's great now. Will it be great many years down the road? Now, is it a deal breaker? No, because I can still go to the power supply and turn it on and it'll clean my pool. I just won't have, uh, I, I would have no way to access some of those other features. Um, other cons, the uh, it's, you know, this is, this unit has a two year warranty and it's actually 
um, only 18 months for the cable power supply and motor. So that's a little bit different. My Premier, it had a three-year warranty, and I don't believe uh, there was any kind of stipulations on any of the parts. Now, I never had to use, actually I did. I sent the unit in once because it, it was doing something weird, um, and they took care of me. They fixed it right away. Um, so it's a little less expensive, but you've got a little le less of the war uh, warranty. It may not be as durable. I don't know. Time will tell. If you looked at, you're, you think about some of the things I, I covered there, um, the cable is thinner. Is that because it's made less expensive and it's not as durable, or is it just because it doesn't need a uh, as heavy duty of a cable? Um, some of the more expensive units have, you know, rubber strain reliefs on the cable where it, it meets the unit. The Dolphin Premier had that spring thing on it that actually kind of rusted. Um, so the probably not the greatest uh, um, thing there, but uh, I'm just not not positive on that one. Um, so those are really the only cons that I see for this. So it, you know, again, when we look at price, uh, the, the premier, I paid $1,300 for it. So that's, that's about, I, you know, about $300 more than what I paid for this one. If you go to the Matronics website, they still sell the premier, um, on the, on their website, they list the premier at $1,700, but it says buy from Amazon. And when you go to Amazon, uh, the premier is still sold and it's $1,399. I don't know why you would buy the Premier um, because you can get the, uh, there's so many words here, Dolphin Nautilus CC Supreme, which is the step up from the Pro. Um, it's also $1,399 and that has, you know, all the bells and whistles. It, it does actually, I looked at some videos there. The It does have two motors for the track, so it can actually pivot on 360 degrees. It's got a third brush in the middle. You know, it's got it's got a bunch more features. So, um, again, you're gonna you know you want more features, you're gonna pay for more features. Uh, but again, all in all, super super happy with my purchase. Um, now, it was not a purchase I was expecting to make. I would have been more than happy if my uh, Premier had lasted another 11 years, but uh, that was not the case. So again, not hat or not sad at all. Um, the reason that I went with Matronics and Dolphin in the in the first place was because of their reputation for um, equipment that works. The, I, I had read so many reviews about um, pool cleaners that you know would come with a one year warranty and they'd break like right at the one year mark or they just were faulty or always having problems or whatever. I said only one problem um, in the eleven years that I that I had the uh, the uh, Dolphin Premier. And so, will I get 11 years out of the uh, Nautilus CC Pro? I don't know, but um, here's to hoping that uh, we don't run into any problems in the future. So, once again, I appreciate you taking the time. I know this is, uh, don't worry, this is not going to turn into a pool robot review channel. Um, I may, uh, actually somebody reached out to me and said they were going to send one for me to review, but that was a while ago. I haven't heard anything, so who knows. Uh, but uh, we'll be keeping up with the uh, the lasers, the 3D uh, printing, and the uh, CNC work. So that's primarily where I'm focused. But, um, you know, when something presents itself like this one, uh, the last time I did one of these reviews, it got over 600,000 uh, views. So that's why I decided to make another one. Now, there's a lot more people uh, making YouTube videos these days, so it probably won't be that popular. But, um, again, I'm here to present information out to you so that you can make informed buying decisions and uh, that's the whole purpose um, behind Directed Tech. So once again, thanks for joining me and take care, everyone.